Today, we mourn the passing of the legendary singer as we gather to bid a heartfelt farewell and celebrate the timeless legacy they leave behind. Since her passing at the age of 56, the vocalist Sinad O'Connor, whose work both enthralled and surprised audiences all over the world, has been the topic of mourning in addition to honors that have been bestowed upon her in her memory. O'Connor's family claimed in a brief statement that was posted in the evening on Wednesday that she remained in the public eye, despite her desires, when Sinid O'Connor's single Nothing Compares to You got number one on the charts in 1990. The statement was made after O'Connor passed away. The statement began, It is with great sadness that we announced the passing of our beloved Sinid, and carried on to detail how everyone felt about her passing away after reading the news. In this trying time, her loved ones have asked to be left alone because they are unable to find any solace in the news that was just shared with them. Eighteen months after he had escaped from a hospital where he had been placed on suicide watch and was under observation for suicidal ideation, the Irish singer's son Shane took his own life. He had been diagnosed with suicidal ideation. Shane was in his seventeenth year at the time. O'Connor was the third child of a total family of four, making her the middle child. Both the music industry and the country of Ireland, where O'Connor was born and raised, were taken completely by surprise by the statement. The Irish Prime Minister, Leo Varadkar, has shared his heartfelt condolences about the tragedy. Her ability was unparalleled, and her songs have been broadcast on radio stations in every region of the world. My deepest condolences go out to her loved ones, including her family and friends, as well as everybody who enjoyed her music and respected her talent. The Deputy Prime Minister of Ireland, Michael Martin, has expressed his sorrow for the passing of one of the most significant artists in the country. All of us who were fortunate enough to have known and loved her, along with her children, relatives, and friends, are currently in a state of sadness. Very few artists have had such a significant impact on Irish society and culture, according to Calm O'Gorman, who is the head of Amnesty International in Ireland, and made this statement, a horrible and tragic event. During this trying time, our thoughts and prayers are with her husband, her children, and anybody else who cared about her and was affected by her passing. O'Connor was a pioneer for other women who worked in the music industry, according to statements made by O'Connor's former manager Fakna Sile, who worked with O'Connor from 1986 to 1990 and later on. Sile worked with O'Connor from 1986 to 1990 and later on. It wasn't just that she looked different. Her courage to say what she knew to be true paved the way for other women in the music industry to be as authentic as they wanted to be. It wasn't just that she looked different. It wasn't just that she appeared different, the narrator said. According to Sile, the singer had a hard time adjusting to the unexpected notoriety that she gained following the year 1990. When people are compelled to enter the public arena, especially at such a young age, it has the potential to have a detrimental impact on them. It gave her access to a significant new stage, but I have my questions about whether or not she was ready to carry the weight of the responsibility that went along with it when she accepted the role. Artists have a responsibility to be conscious that not everything that gives the impression of having value actually does. This was a horrifyingly accurate depiction of both her personal life and the era in which she lived during the time period in which she lived. In the course of her career, the Dubliner had consistently chosen not to pursue the conventional kind of fame. Despite this, in the most recent years, she enjoyed something of a renaissance, because she tore up a portrait of Pope John Paul Io while she was performing on Saturday Night Live in 1992, she has offended some viewers who have never forgiven her for her actions. She was greeted with a standing ovation after she was presented with the prize for Classic Irish Record at this year's RT Gay Choice Music Prizes. This was the very first time the category had been recognized for its accomplishments, so the audience was quite excited to see her win. For the purpose of her contribution, she decided to concentrate on the problem of refugees in Ireland. We were thrilled to hear her greeting, which was your very welcome in Ireland, and she greeted us with those words. To paraphrase the lyrics of an old love song, I love you very much and I wish for your happiness. Nothing Compares, which was published in 2022, recounted the tale of O'Connor's demonization and how she was attacked for her open criticism of the Catholic Church, the Irish Constitution, the Grammys, and the American National Song. 
The book also chronicled the account of O'Connor's demonization and how she was attacked for her open criticism of the Grammys and the American National Song. She was portrayed as a pioneer of the hashtag MeToo movement, an activist who stood up for those who did not have a voice and helped to pave the way for the establishment of the movement. Her memoir, Rememberings, was published in 2021 and details her problems throughout her life, including her early education, her kleptomania, her pop fame, her failed romances, and her mental illness. Her mother was killed in a car accident in 1985, and her mother was aggressive towards her throughout her youth. Her mother died in 1985. Accidental death by automobile claimed the life of her mother in the year 1985. O'Connor's first studio album, The Lion and the Cobra, which was released in 1987, was entered into consideration for a Grammy Award. The CD was also nominated for a Grammy Award. Her birthday is 1966, and she came into the world in the neighborhood of South Dublin. She rose to fame overnight after releasing a mournful rendition of Prince's song, Nothing Compares to You, which went on to sell millions of copies. Since it was initially posted to YouTube, there have been more than 400 million views of the accompanying music video. She became well-known not only due to the success of her ideas, but also due to the fact that she shaved the top of her head, which also contributed to her rise to prominence. The act of ripping up a photograph of the Pope led to a variety of unfavorable consequences, the first of which was receiving death threats and requests for radio stations to cease broadcasting. The phrase kick her ass originated as a result of Frank Sinatra's desire to carry out the action described in the phrase. The later disclosures of the Vatican's cover-ups of sexual abuse problems were seen by many people as providing O'Connor with a sense of justification for her actions. She came out with a total of 10 studio albums, several of which took an unconventional approach and were not very successful commercially. O'Connor announced her sexual orientation to the public for the first time in the year 2000 when she gave an interview to a publication in the United States. Her faith in God and her communion with a power greater than herself guided the path that her life would take. She had a massive tattoo of Jesus on her chest, and another tattoo that said the Lion of Judah shall break every chain was on the back of her hand. She also had a tattoo on her foot that said the Lion of Judah shall break every chain. These two tattoos were identical to one another. The adage from the Bible that all things must pass was fashioned into a pendant and worn around her neck. In the late 1990s, she communicated her wish to a bishop from a distinct branch of the Catholic Church to be branded Mother Bernadette Mary once she was ordained as a priest. She did this in the hopes that the bishop would grant her request. Within the confines of the Catholic Church, this discussion took place. She became a Muslim in 2018, at which point she changed her name to Shuhada. Nonetheless, she continued to act under the name she was known by before she became a Muslim. She struggled with her mental as well as her physical health, and she discussed these struggles in interviews and posts she made on social media in a range of different tones, ranging from humorous to sad. Thanks for watching.